Hi everyone! Welcome to Soup Top Recipes. I'm Mandy, and today we're making steamed dumplings. I have made pan fried and boiled dumplings in the past, and I always get comments that ask me, can I just steam them? The answer is no. You cannot use regular dumpling wrapper to make steamed dumplings because the skin is going to come out tough and chewy. The correct way is to use hot water to form the dough. So let's turn on the heat and bring some water to a boil. I have got here 280 grams of all-purpose flour, add half teaspoon of salt, whisk to incorporate it well, Slowly pour in the boiling hot water and stir the flour at the same time. Did you notice that the water ratio is 64%? Regular homemade dumpling wrapper is usually 55% or less. That is because hot water would denature some of the protein and the flour can now absorb more water without being sticky. The dumpling does not contact the water directly while steaming. With a little bit of extra water that we forced into the dough, the skin will come out nice and soft. Right now, the flour is still a bit hot. You just cover it and let it cool for a couple of minutes. Then go in with your hands and form everything into a rough dough while it is still warm. Don't forget to scrape off the bottom of the bowl and clean up every little bit of flour. Drizzle in 2 teaspoons of vegetable oil and knead it until the oil is absorbed. It is better to transfer it onto the working surface and continue to knead for 3 to 5 minutes. Cover it again. Give it 15 minutes to relax the gluten. Then the dough will be much more pliable. Knead it again for a few more minutes or until smooth. Shape it into a log. Cover it and set it aside while we are making the filling. Turn the heat to medium. Add a few tablespoons of vegetable oil to the wok. Don't need to wait for the wok to get hot. Just directly add 1 cup of diced onion, a third cup of minced garlic, and 2 and a half tablespoon of minced ginger. A lot of dumpling recipes will just add these aromatics into the filling directly. Today, we'll do something different. Take a little extra step to caramelize them, which makes a huge difference in taste. Stir over medium-low heat for about 10 minutes, the onion doesn't need to turn brown completely. You just keep an eye on the garlic because it usually burns faster than the onion. My garlic bits are golden brown now. Let's turn off the heat. We'll pour in a third cup of chicken stock. Or water will also work. For three reasons. First, it will cool down everything so when you add this to the ground pork, it doesn't cook the meat right away. Second, it will deglaze the wok so you don't waste any flavor. Last, a little bit of liquid makes the filling extra juicy and tender. Okay, now we are going to season it with 2 tablespoons of soy sauce, one and a half tablespoon of oyster sauce, one and a half tablespoon of Chinese cooking wine, half teaspoon of sugar, some black pepper to taste, mix thoroughly, it may not look that good yet, but this smells like heaven. Pour it right into 500 grams of ground pork. The fat ratio is 12%. I have also tried with ground chicken thigh. It works beautiful as well. Go in with your hand and mix it thoroughly. Then stir the filling in one direction for 3 to 5 minutes to develop the texture. I know a lot of you are wondering why. Let me explain. The meat contains a lot of protein, which are long chain like molecule in the microscopic level. If you stir them within one direction, you are unfolding and stretching the molecules into strains. You can actually see the change. 
Within five minutes of stirring, the meat becomes sticky and it starts pulling away from the side of the bowl. You see some strings appearing. Imagine millions of micro strings tangling with each other and forming into a net. That is how you get a good texture for your filling. If you stir and then reverse, you'll break down the structure. The filling will be loose. It won't join together. Okay, I think that looks good. Let's add the diced scallion and the sweet corn. If you have never tried sweet corns in your dumplings, you gotta give this a try. It adds so much sweetness and juiciness to your filling. Very nice. Okay, mix it thoroughly and your filling is done. Now the dumpling dough has been rested for 30 minutes. Let's roll it into a long, even log. If it gets longer than your working surface, you can cut it in half. Divide the dough into 40 little pieces. Each one should weigh 11 to 12 grams, which is quite small compared to a regular dumpling wrapper. This is because steamed dumplings should have a light skin. You don't want it to be thick and doughy. Lightly dust some flour to prevent stickiness. Cover all the pieces with a damp towel so they don't dry out. Take one piece of the dough, dust it with a little more flour, flatten it with your hand first, then we are going to roll it into a round wrapper. This is how I do it. The rolling pin goes forward and back. The left hand holds the dough and turns it while the right hand keeps rolling it. Repeat this fast and you will get a round wrapper with a thick middle and a thin edge. The diameter is about 2.5 inches. Put about 1.5 tablespoon of filling in the middle which is quite a lot for such a small wrapper. If you are a beginner, you can put less, so it will be easier for you to handle. This is a leaf-shaped dumpling, which is one of the complicated folding methods. If this is too difficult for you, that's alright. I have a video, 24 ways to fold dumplings, in which I include lots of foolproof folding methods. You can check it out right here. Let me show you again. The left hand holds the wrapper and the filling. Pinch the right corner and lift it up. Pinch a pleat on the bottom half of the wrapper, then make one on the top half of the wrapper, one after another one. Repeat this all the way until the end. This requires both of your hands to work together in a balance and it does take a lot of practice. When you get to the end, Rub the little tip to close the dumpling. Look how pretty that is. Okay, next we are going to steam the dumplings. Wet a cheesecloth and place it into a steamer to prevent stickiness. Put the dumplings in one by one. If you don't have a cheesecloth, you can use parchment paper as well. Just make sure you poke some holes on the paper to allow the steam to go through. I fill the pot with some cold water, put the steamer right on the top, and uh, turn the heat to high. Once you can see some steam coming out, switch the heat to medium low and steam for 12 minutes. While waiting, let's quickly make a dipping sauce. You will need 2 tablespoons of pure peanut butter, 2 teaspoons of pure sesame butter. These are the products that I'm using. If your peanut butter is not 100%, you will have to adjust the seasoning by taste. Continue by adding 1 tablespoon of sugar, stirring 4 to 5 tablespoons of boiling hot water in batches. The heat will make the peanut butter nice and creamy. Once you get it into a smooth texture, like that, 
You can season it with a third teaspoon of salt, half tablespoon of soy sauce, and half tablespoon of Chinese black vinegar. Mix thoroughly. Taste to see if you need to adjust the flavor. Mine is perfect. Pour it into a sauce bowl. Sprinkle some chili flake and sesame seeds as garnish. The dumplings are ready. Ooh. I love when you open the lid, the steam just blows in your face. Let me show you how thin the wrapper is. You can actually see the liquid flowing inside the dumplings. Looks so good. Mmm, the smell of the caramelized aromatic really comes through. Mmm. It's very interesting to bite into those corns. The flavor just bursts in your mouth. Mmm. Now let's try one with the dipping sauce. Mmm, this is so perfect. The nuttiness lifts the taste a lot. The dipping sauce does look heavy, but because we made the wrapper so thin, it's not doughy at all. Together, they're just well balanced. I hope you give this a try soon. As always, you can click the link in the description and find the printable recipe. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. That really encourages me to continue making more delicious recipes. Thank you for watching and uh, let me introduce you to today's sponsorship, Soup Dog Recipes Wok. This is the wok that I'm selling and I am proud to recommend it to you as I have been using it on my channel for years. It is lightweight and it responds to heat changes quickly and evenly. It can also sustain super high temperature without damage. Perfect for wok cooking. If you like Chinese food and you want to learn how to make it at home better than takeout, you definitely need one of these as it is the most basic cookware in Chinese cuisine. The link is in the description. Go check it out. By the way, we just relaunched this product in UK because last year we weren't able to ship to UK anymore after Brexit. Now you can buy it again. It's free shipping and custom fees included. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.